Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet is the Dr. Doreen is an expert in autism. Doreen Grand Pichet. Dr. Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet is a visionary in the field of autism. Now you can ask her questions on Ask Dr. Wonderful. Doreen. Wonderful. And I'm so glad this parent, this other parent wrote in because we didn't get to her question uh, oh, last yeah. week. My my son is five years old, diagnosed with level two on the spectrum, global developmental delay, and language disorder. He is limited verbal. When he has meltdowns, is it okay to hold him and comfort him? My husband sends him to his room. I usually will take him and hold him without speaking. Meltdowns generally occur when he is denied something he wants. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so that's a really great question, and we are going to get into the functions of behavior yet again. So um, I love that the parent uh, mentioned that he has a meltdown when he doesn't get something that he wants. So at this point, as you need to, the right uh, way to deal with it is to make sure that he doesn't get the thing that he just tantrumed for he, under any circumstances. And ideally, you would want to just ignore the meltdown. Now, it's hard to ignore a meltdown when you tell the child to go to his room, when you hold him, especially when you hold him, you're giving him a lot of attention and love and caring, which I know as parents, we want to do that. But you don't really want to do that when he's having a meltdown, because honestly, it's when you you're rewarding him for when he has a meltdown, you're not rewarding him with the object that he was tantruming for, but you are holding you are rewarding him. Uh, nevertheless, because, be, you know, being held and so on is not necessarily uh, negative to the child. So at this point, my recommendation would be to not hold him and not send him to his room. But if you can tolerate it, if you can both handle it, ignore him, just have it, let him have his meltdown, completely ignore him. Um, and that is very hard to do, believe me, I know. And I know, Shannon, you've had experience with this as well. But if you can ignore him, what to expect is that the meltdown might get a little bit more intense, but then if you stick with it, it will go away. And he will learn that having a meltdown is not a good way to communicate. Now, at the same time, what I want to uh, advise you is if there's a circumstance where he wants something you know it ahead of time. You know that he's about to have a meltdown because he wants that object or he wants to get out of a situation, whatever it is, and you prompt him to vocalize what he wants, right? So you prompt him to have the appropriate response. I think, Shanna, did the parents say that it, it happens when he wants access to something? They said when he gets denied something, yes. Something, but I don't yeah. know what it is he's denied, yeah. Right, so if you, you can just model for him before he tantrums, if you can tell him, say, I want whatever it is, and he says it, and you can give it to him, wherever that is possible, then do that, okay, so that he avoids the tantrum and learns that he can have, he can vocalize to receive the object wherever possible. Now, sometimes it's not possible to give him the object that he wants, in which case, if he tantrums, you need to completely uh, ignore it. And again, this is another circumstance where you're teaching your child discrimination. It is okay to ask for something and then you will receive it. It is not okay to have a tantrum or a meltdown in that case, you will not receive it. So yeah, it's always about teaching our kids when something is okay and when it's not. I, I lost you there for just a second. But I just want to say, um, when we talk about ignoring, um, that it's, I didn't understand when therapists were first talking to me about ignoring. Um, but, it, you know, I've, t I've told the story many times before, so I'm not going to tell it again here. But it, it doesn't mean that you are someplace where you don't have eyes on the situation. 
um, when, when they did the first planned ignoring with me, I was in the room with my son, but where we have this thing where we orient to our kids, your kid is freaking out and your kid is screaming and your kid is pulling on your pant leg. And we will turn to them and say, stop that. Don't do that. That's not ignoring. Um, what they taught me was to busy myself with another activity. So I'm in the room with him. And I, you know, there's the famous story that I tell about the fact that they made me water the plants and then dust the television and clean up some mail. And I was like, what is this, a cleaning program? Um, right. But it was to get my focus. I was still in the room with him. I was still making sure that he wasn't hurting himself or, you know, property destruction that I could, if, if I saw him walking over to take a planter and toss it across the room, I got there first and moved the planter. But I didn't say to him, I'm moving this so you can't throw it. I didn't make eye contact with him and say, ha, tricked you, I got here before you. <laughs> All these things that I would have done. So, um, but what it does, what, what I think the explanation that was made for me that it's like, uh, there's a light switch on me. And that when he is behaving in a way, you know, that is appropriate and the way that we expect him to behave, the light switch is on and I'm focused on him. But when he is behaving in a way like screaming or yelling or, you know, throwing things or he would swipe things off of the counter, my light switch is off and I'm blocking, but I'm not giving him any of my light. My light switch is off. And that that's super important to learn how to do. It does not mean you, you know, send them someplace else where you don't have eyes on them or that you can't, or that you ignore everything that they say. Only the, only if he's screaming, I'm, you know, wiping my phone off. Right. And then if he stops screaming and he says, mom, what are you doing? I go, oh, I'm wiping my phone. And then if he starts screaming, I go back to wiping my phone and not paying attention to what he's doing. It's hard, y'all. It is hard. Uh, and be gentle with yourself if you don't get it right the first time. But it works. They yeah. learn so quickly. Oh, she's not giving me what I want for that. So I guess I'll try something. Yeah, that was a great uh, description, Shannon. And that's really important because basically it's not at all about ignoring every behavior. We're not recommending that. You want to just ignore behaviors that are unacceptable to you. And you want to reward the behaviors that are appropriate. So any kind of conversation or request vocally uh, or anything that is appropriate, you do want to interact with and engage with. And anything that is not appropriate for you or is challenging in some way or inappropriate to the to the moment those are the behaviors that you want to ignore yeah and it's super hard you guys it goes against everything that you ever saw anybody demonstrate in terms of parenting on a tv show or in a movie or anything because and and your in-laws are going to lose their minds when you do yeah. this like they're going to go, you need to say something to him. You need to, like, he needs to be talked to. You can't just let that go. Um, and, and in fact, it doesn't work. It doesn't yeah. work. Hey, thanks for watching Autism Live. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.